special report because we are still lining up the 40, 50 different articles, documents, video. This is the embryonic beginnings of InfoWars Nightly News. And it's a crash course in brain surgery. We've got TV people that have worked nationally, locally, you name it. But we're just basically right now testing out what we're going to put in the soup. And that's what's happening uh, here tonight. But I have a full transmission against tyranny lined up for you coming up in what? 15, 20 minutes, guys? Now, it is 7.04. Is that an atomic clock I've got in here? Is it 7.04 Central Time? Now 7.05. So we are live here tonight. Thank you for watching. Um, we've got a big, big news show lined up for you this evening. And I will attempt as best I can to uh, remain calm. We're going to look at uh, BBC, speechless as traitor tells truth. The collapse is coming and Goldman Sachs rules the world. Um, since we reported on this yesterday at Infowars.com, California school districts are having to admit, well, it's not the law you take vaccines, but we're still going to lie to you and tell you it is. Uh, that is coming up tonight. And we're also going to look at uh, Fukushima, Bloomberg, Fukushima desolation, worse since Nagasaki as residents flee. And, you know, the, the issue I'm not too happy about is we're having radioactive isotopes rain down on us in North America because, see, there's a thing called the Pacific Ocean right here. And over here on the side of it is Japan. And the trade winds and above those, the jet stream blow this way, and we're right here, just four or 5,000 miles away, right here, and so it blows over, and when the radioactive isotopes readings went off the chart in the last six months, the Environmental Protection Agency and the Food and Drug Administration came out and said, you know what, we're just going to raise the level of radioactive isotopes, and we're just going to say all this is safe, so that's coming up tonight. Now, something I won't have time to cover in the official hard-hitting InfoWars Nightly News coming up in a few minutes uh, is this little baby. And as of an hour ago, it was still up on Drudge. Perhaps we should put a news website up on that uh, monitor over there and go to DrudgeReport.com. And over on the right-hand side, there's a red link, or it was red link earlier, uh, that has the headline uh, from Infowars.com. Well, it, it, it doesn't matter if that monitor's way across the room. We can, we can still tell a photo over there. We've got what it takes. AP labeled racist for accurately transcribing Obama's speech. Now, tomorrow night, it's a 99% chance. We're, we're actually kind of late tonight because I'm always obsessing on information instead of pr actually presenting it. I remembered when I saw this article, Rick Perry about two months ago in Los Angeles speaking to a Hispanic Christian prayer group, and he got up there and did the worst Southern Californian immigrant uh, accent I've ever heard. It was, uh, well, I can't even do it, and I'm good at accents. I can't do it because it didn't sound, it didn't even sound like somebody from Mexico. But uh, it was basically like, I am Rick Perry, good to see you. Yes, I am your friend. I love Jesus, Jesus as well. And so I spent about 30 minutes a day with Dude before the show trying to find that. I wanted that tonight. We couldn't find it. But if you are able to find it, Dude, what's your email? Rob D, just R-O-B-D at Infowars.com. I guess, I guess Dude isn't in there. Oh, there he is the giant control room bigger than the studio. I was out of town the week they built this. So. <laughs> but um, none of the crew's fault, though. It's, it's, it's the person that did it's no longer here. But side issue. It's good to have a Star Destroyer bridge-level control room. Marcos, you like it, don't you? It's awesome. Anyways, um, I'm not in a good mood tonight because of this news. So 
I was trying to find this Rick Perry clip because I saw the clip two months ago. I heard 5.90 a.m. play the thing at nauseum. And I said, okay, at least I can find the clip of Hillary in Kentucky going, long time ago, I was down here doing a redneck imitation that I is, is 10 times what they do in Kentucky. And we were able to find that clip. And, and, and you're saying, what are you talking about, Alex? There's all this important news. The point is, politicians, for whatever reason, if, they, if a politician goes up to the North Pole and finds some Eskimos or Inuits, I would imagine they check with a linguist to try to get the cadence of their talk. That's always insulting to me. If somebody flies down here from New York and tells me, do you like to ride horses? and you wear big straw hats because you're a dumb Texan? I'm like, no, I'm just an, an American, a human. I'm, I'm, you know, we actually have buildings here and computers. And I've, I've met a lot of folks from New York who are great people, but they, they show up and they think that tumbleweeds are blowing by and all this is going on. But to make a long story short, tomorrow night we've got Hillary doing her Kentucky imitation to a group of Kentuckians. I mean, I would find it insulting to go speak to a group of Africans or Kentuckians, Appalachians, uh, Germans, Chinese, and go, well, since I'm here at the Chinese university to speak on economics, let me now talk to you like this. Ah, oh, hello, good to see you. Ah, oh, dun, 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 dun. I mean, that's basically what it is. So, so tomorrow night, We've got politicians going, dun, 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 dun. We've got that coming up. And we've got Hillary to a group of what she thinks are evil Appalachian, Kentucky, and rednecks going, Got to say you, I am here. I am from Kentucky. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. And I'm trying to find Rick Perry going, it, I have to get into that character. How do you do that? Because he didn't do a good one. It was like a... My name is Lopo Gonzalez, and my cousin says, I mean, it is literally that bad. I couldn't find that one yet. But I do have Barack Obama. And that's the issue. The Associated Press, globalist, New World Order, they admit they even have computers transcribing speeches, and I'm sure the computer did this. But here's the headline that Drudge has. AP labeled racist for accurately transcribing Obama's speech. And they say they, they drop the G's. And so Obama, by the way, linguists have praised him for this. When he gets up before a black audience, this is a guy whose dad reportedly was like maybe 25% African. So, so whatever. He's got some African heritage. Great. Wonderful. I don't care. I'm way beyond race and all this stuff. That's not what this show's about. But you've got a guy who basically speaks like a cultured Harvard you know, trendy, liberal, know-it-all with a perfect white affect, which I find obnoxious because I can hardly talk, you know, I'm not as trendy. But Obama, every time he gets up in front of a black audience, I mean, he'll be like, I was rolling. Well, I mean, I can't even do the accent. It's, uh, we're going to play the clip tomorrow night. But uh, he does what you would call kind of that cool southern black accent, authoritative. I mean, it's, it's a nice accent. I like it. But the point is, when he gets in front of black audiences, he does this accent. Just like Hillary gets up and goes, I wear a straw hat, I'm from Kentucky. Or Rick Perry gets up and says, oh, hello, I am from Mexico. I mean, it's ridiculous. But how does MSNBC respond to this? They come out and play the race card and actually attack the Associated Press who is as dry as it gets and says they're racist because they actually quoted Obama in kind of the black dialect that in linguist training at major universities, I know because I took a semester of it, is an admitted language. The point is, these politicians are going in and for whatever reason they've been told, speak in the dialect of the group you're talking to, it's more effective. I don't agree with that. I've got family who, when they're talking to a black person, will try to talk like what they think a black person talks like. Or when they talk to Hispanic people that speak better English than I do, they'll go like, 
Hey, how are you doing today? Mm -hmm. I mean, for me personally, it makes me absolutely cringe. I'm going to talk at you like I talk with information. I'm not going to sit there. But the point is, the politicians manufacture this garbage where they basically do what I've seen other people do. I've seen folks that run into a Japanese person or something like, Are you doing well? Good for you. Please, you like chopstick. The point is, it is a condescending thing, which says to somebody, I'm not interested in what you think or actually believe in and who you are and what you stand for. I am going to obsess over what type of accent people that look like you in some stereotype might have. Now, this is quite a buildup to where I'm going because I'm sick of political correctness. I don't care what religion you are, what color you are, any of it, as long as you will leave my guns alone and my private property and my family. If you'll stay out of my business, I love you. I want you to be free. I want you to be rich. I believe in prosperity. I believe in a win, 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 win scenario, not a some got to lose for some got to gain system. And you've been watching for 15 minutes. You're going, where is he going with this? I'm going to this place with it. Okay. Drudge Report is linked to our article. We're getting the drudge love as we do many days a week now. And here's Paul Watson's headline. AP labeled racist for accurately transcribing Obama speech. And it says MSNBC has yet again played the race card to demonize not even criticism, but merely unsympathetic portrayal of Barack Obama as racist after AP writer was lambasted for accurately transcribing Obama's Black Caucus speech. During the speech, Obama attempted to fool the black audience into thinking he was one of them and not a paid teleprompter reader for Wall Street by dropping the G's at the end of his words. I mean, this is like CIA anthropology, sociology, how to manipulate. And he gets up there and basically speaks in like a Southern black accent like Martin Luther King. And the point is he doesn't talk like this normally. I mean, for me, that would be very insulting if I was black and a guy who doesn't talk like, quote, a black person does, some stereotype, got up I mean, if the guy spoke with that stereotype and that was his accent, I'd be like, well, this is great. But if, if a guy got up that talked one way to one audience and another way to another audience, I'd be insulted. I mean, all I want is what is authentic. I mean, who are these people that spend all their time being inauthentic? So the Associated Press, we're going to play these clips tomorrow night, along with Hillary and the rest of them, with all this fake garbage, comes out and engages in this spin that it is racist to actually print what Obama said. You're supposed to play along. In fact, MSNBC points out other outlets transcribed it and cut out the ghetto talk. The issue isn't that the AP transcribed it correctly. The issue is why is Obama engaging in abonics when that isn't how he normally talked? Here's another article out of Ocala.com in the U.S. Patrons mistake ice cream shop mascot for KKK robes. And it, interestingly, Diaz, who was from Puerto Rico, had never heard of the KKK before, this controversy. She can't even quite get her tongue around the name, referring to the white supremacist group as the Cuckoo Klan, without any hint of irony. And there's an image of it. It's a person in a giant chest down sugar cone with a vanilla cone over the head with sprinkles. And it turns out there was a near riot when people thought it was a Ku Klux Klan person. This is what I mean. Obama has said that they are going to use race as their issue. Well, what else do they have? Obama's paid for by offshore banks, raping us just like George W. Bush. Everybody, no matter what color you are or religion, is being screwed by this. Our country is falling apart, and Obama says, I'm going to make this about racial politics. So, of course, they've got MSNBC, owned by General Electric, the big bomb makers, out there pushing racial division in the name of fighting it to get us all at each other's throats 
for quoting Obama accurately. Well, my ancestors, some of them come from Kentucky and then Tennessee to Texas. Tomorrow night when I play Hillary, doing some weird, to the power of 10, fake Kentucky redneck hillbilly voice, I'm not bashing white hillbillies. I'm showing Hillary acting like a two-faced fool. I mean, if we could find the Perry clip, I know it's out there, we couldn't find it today, of him talking in some weird Spanish-Mexican accent, it's not about Hispanics, it's about Rick Perry being a fake. And it's the same thing with Obama. What is he doing in front of a black audience suddenly talking like he's a gangbanger? It's an insult to black people. You do have the KKK ice cream cone guy? Okay, go ahead and play it then. There he is. I mean, this is pure evil, ladies and gentlemen. This person from Puerto Rico doesn't even know what the KKK is. And it was reportedly people were freaking out. Because the mainstream media is telling you there's Ku Klux Klan people under every single table. In fact, hold on a minute. Is there one under here? Is there one under there? I mean, look, the system is throwing everything at us they got. It's Goldman Sachs. It's the big mega banks. That's who's screwing us. And the system wants to make it a racial or religious issue. I don't care what color you are. You're being screwed by these globalists who are the biggest welfare recipients in the world. They're the ones bankrupting us. Are we ready to go to the nightly news? Are you ready for me to go to break and come back and refocus and give folks the news? You know, I'll tell you something. Just, just, just put the Al-Qaeda cream guy up. No, it's not racist cream. It's Al-Qaeda cream. There's nothing more terrifying than a Puerto Rican in an ice cream cone. <laughs> and it's in the news that people were panicking. They thought there was a, a Ku Klux Klan invasion. <laughs> How could anybody drive by that guy and think it was a Ku Klux Klan person? I have seen that in Austin, people dressed up in ice cream cones. That's like a $100 suit you can buy. It's like the guy's twirling signs to come look at real estate or come to their steakhouse. God, a steak sounds good right now, doesn't it? Oh, my God. I, the idiocy of this. I saw another report today about all the racial conflict in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, if white people go and kill some black guy, it's not going to help any of us. If black people come, come kill some white guy, it's not going to help us. If black folks lynch some Puerto Rican because he's wearing an ice cream cone, and they think it's the Klan, it's, a, it's not the real threat. It's like this terrorism thing. You've got a better chance of being killed by a honeybee or by a dog attack or by hundreds of different things than, you do, than being killed by a terrorist. Why are we talking about giving up all of our liberties and all of our freedoms because of some imaginary terror threat? I mean, it is literally an exercise in fear-mongering. My God, it's admitted in vaccine inserts that tens of thousands a year, more like 50,000 a year, have adverse reactions and that hundreds die from vaccines. And I've seen these scientists get up and say, well, that's a cost it's good to pay to eradicate these diseases. But it's destroying our immune system. The vaccines are full of garbage. I remember seven years ago, the EPA, no, it was the FDA, legalized spraying a live virus on all meat cutlets, like bologna, hot dogs, you name it, so that they don't have to keep it clean or keep it refrigerated. Nothing will grow on it because they spray a virus that kills bacteria. And then there's all these links to Crohn's and other bowel diseases because we're eating stuff. Well, I can't just say that. Uh, Google uh, uh, FDA approves flesh. Uh, no. Food and Drug Administration approves virus that kills bacteria or virus that, no, 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 the exact headline. Food and Drug Administration approves spraying viruses on meat. And the point is, since then it's been proven, these are linked to all these bowel disorders because it attacks your body as well. So instead of selling you good, clean meat that wasn't rotten, they just approve radiating it and spraying viruses on it. Yeah, there it is. Let's uh, move that over so folks can see it. Viral meat spray 
Advancing Food Safety, 2006. And uh, it goes into how they had since approved that. Okay, that's it. Look, don't worry about viral meat spray. The real thing to be afraid of is an imaginary guy with a turban on his head or even more deadly, a guy wearing an ice cream cone outfit from Puerto Rico. I mean, that, that, that is horrifying. I mean, I'll, I'll admit it. You drive by some brown guy wearing an ice cream outfit, and people are like, ah, the Klan, they're coming to get us. Again, the wicked flee when none pursue. Stop being afraid of BS. Become aware and take action against the real tyrants. We're going to go to the intro right now, get my news articles together, and I will present to you InfoWars Nightly News coming up. It is Tuesday, September 27th, 2011. This is InfoWars Nightly News. I am your host, Alex Jones. Coming up, we're not going to have a Skype interview or a scientist in studio. We're going to have Rob Dew. Uh, he works right here uh, in the nightly news, and he also is heading up a three-man team I sent to the G20 in 2009. The statute of limitations was about to run out for him to sue the police for the violation of his civil rights in the First Amendment. Stuart Rhodes of Oath Keepers, a top-of-his-class constitutional lawyer, has now filed suit on behalf of... Rob Dew. We're going to have Rob Dew joining us in studio, and we'll also look at what's happening uh, in lower Manhattan, where hundreds and hundreds of peaceful protesters have been arrested. Peaceful women have been pepper sprayed. People have been beat up. Uh, just incredible tyranny we're seeing in this once land of the free, home of the brave. So that is coming up. Also, we're going to look at the Japanese government admitting that this is the biggest nuclear disaster in history at Fukushima. Bloomberg also breaks that down. Uh, there's also an incredible development in California with the school districts going door to door and saying, okay, I'm here to inject your child, open up, implying through color of law, intimidation, fraud, that it's the law you have to take uh, the shots. That's coming up as well. We'll also look at TomTom. Tom. Came out a few years ago that they were spying on their customers and selling the data to the police. And then when the news came out that OnStar was doing this, OnStar claims they're backing off for now, and then TomTom Tom got caught again doing it. Uh, so uh, same tactic here. I'm going to break down the fact that all these major technology companies, a large part of their business is actually spying on you uh, for this out-of-control federal government that makes the East German Stasi, who did have the record for the most spying against their citizens, uh, look like amateur uh, schoolboys or girls. But first, I wanted to get into a report that came out. Goldman Sachs rules the world. They're in their little Emperor Palpatine chair. And when a private trader was on the BBC, a private stock trader, he said what many other stock traders like Max Kaiser and others have said on BBC. Uh, Max, of course, has previously had a show on BBC. That Goldman Sachs and the banking cartel rule the world and that their banking takeover is a cancer. So what did Forbes and others run with today? They came out and implied, well, this could be a hoax. No real trader uh, would actually come out and say such things when Ron Paul is talking like this uh, in major polls. Uh, Goldman Sachs and other members of the private Federal Reserve are the most unpopular institutions, corporations in the world. But their response through Forbes and other publications is, oh, this is ridiculous. Some trader went on TV, some stock trader, and uh, said the obvious, it must be a hoax. I mean, we have the Goldman Sachs emails where they said, yeah, we're selling our customers absolute SH, you know what, T. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, we're betting against it. I mean, everybody knows it's Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan and Bank of America and Wells Fargo that run the New World Order and are setting up the global carbon taxes and have got Warren Buffett out lobbying for higher taxes on the rich. He means the middle class so they can get that money in a banker bailout. He's trying to fool the underclass to rob what's left of the middle class because he knows he's exempt from all the laws. That's why he pays almost no taxes and Google and General Electric uh, pay almost no taxes, in some cases zero, because they're globalist. They're exempt. Let's go ahead and go to this uh, clip 
of the stock trader on BBC that freaked out the establishment. And it's going to fall pretty hard because markets are ruled right now by fear. Uh, investors and the big money, the smart money, uh, I'm talking about uh, the big funds, the hedge funds, the institutions, they don't buy this rescue plan. Uh, they, they basically, um, they know the market is toast. They know the stock market is finished. The euro, as far as they're concerned, they don't really care. They're moving their money away to safer uh, assets uh, like treasury bonds, 30-year uh, bonds, and the U.S. dollar. Um, so it's not going to work. We, we keep hearing that whatever the, the politicians are suggesting, and admittedly it's all been rather yeah, let's stop there. so far. We'll go back to the info, babe, in a minute. Um, struggling without a teleprompter at the moment. Uh, that shouldn't be mean, I'm sorry. This is teleprompter, uh, teleprompter free news, by the way. You notice he's stating what's an admitted fact. There's total capital flight out of Europe. And then next he'll run out of the dollar. This is a consolidation. Our guest and economist predicted this years ago. I mean, it's an admitted total sell-off, basically, in many sectors to get away from it. And they know it's been designed to implode Europe. Now they want a new bank of the world based in Europe that the countries no longer have any sovereignty and, and pay all their taxes into. This is all admitted, and, and, and our, our media, the corporate mercenary media, is bemoaning that the Germans don't want to go along with this, and the French don't want to go along with this. They're all freaking out over it. But then meanwhile, this guy comes on and states what everybody knows, and Forbes and others come out and say, this must be a hoax. That, that, was, that was a joke or something. This guy must be with the yes men in a world of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act, as George Orwell said. Let's go back to a little bit more of the clip. Isn't right. Can you pin down exactly what would keep investors happy, make them feel more confident? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, Stop it. Personally? I'll answer the question. The 1.5 quadrillion in derivatives, that is hundreds of times all the real assets that are in the world, that the mega banks created to buy up the planet, and then now they're trying to hand us their debt and say, make us your kings and pay off this debt. It's impossible. They're only using it as a way to consolidate our wealth where we always give them more, 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 more bailouts, more, and more taxes. I'll tell you what will restore confidence in the real world. Write off all that garbage debt. Sure, if you've got a mortgage, fine, you owe it. Sure, if uh, your city has a debt, you owe it. But 90 plus percent of this, it's admitted in Greece, Ireland, here in the U.S., in Europe proper, isn't owed by the countries or the people. Okay? Get that straight. It's a hoax. We don't owe this money. Just because the banksters created over a thousand trillion in garbage, counterfeit trash, doesn't mean that we have to pay for this. It's a black hole. I told you that almost three years ago in the Obama deception. It's impossible to pay back. It's designed to destroy the world economy to set up a world government. And now you see them announcing the world government is the answer. I'm sorry, we got a lot of news coming up and I'm ranting, but this is unscripted. This is reality based. Let's go back to the video clip. Uh, it doesn't matter. That, that's it. See, I'm a trader. Uh, I don't really care about that kind of stuff. I go with what the, uh, I, if I see an opportunity to make money, I go with that. Um, so for most traders, it's not about, it's that we don't really care that much how they're going to fix the, how they're going to fix the economy, how they're going to fix the, uh, the whole situation. Yeah, this is predatory. Our job is to make money from it. There you go. And personally, I've been dreaming of this moment for three years. Uh, I, I, I have a confession, which is uh, I go to bed every night, I dream of another recession. I dream of another moment like this. Stop Why? right because there. In fact, I should have told the crew to put this together. Try to search it right now and put it on screen, uh, on the front screen or on the side screen over here. George Soros, I'm having a great crisis. And he, he said that three years ago. That little criminal, he's a convicted criminal all over the world, is saying it again. This guy is just saying what the real stock traders. Max Kaiser worked with George Soros' son. Max Kaiser invented many of the modern technologies they've got, like virtual trading. And, and he'll tell you, they sit around and talk about screwing everybody. This is who runs our country and our society. They want to sell little old ladies garbage. It's a joke to them. They're wrecking our society. They're not free market. These creatures like George Soros survive off banker bailout money. 
They say, oh my gosh, we've tied all our fraud to your pension funds. Bail us out. And then when we give them the money to bail it out, they don't prop up the pension funds. They take it and laugh at us. Look at him. I'm having a very good crisis. They're laughing at you. And this traitor goes on TV and says what's really happening. The video clip goes viral, and they're angry at him that he did this because it was too much of the stock trader's regular arrogance altogether. You're not supposed to talk about the public as a bunch of scum unless you're a big king daddy pimp like George Soros. Let's go back to the rest of the clip. Uh, people don't seem to uh, maybe remember, but uh, the 30s depression, the depression in the 30s, wasn't just about a market crash. There were some people who were prepared to make money from that crash. Wow. And I think anybody can do that. It, it isn't just for some people in the elite. Anybody can actually make money. It's an opportunity. Uh, when the market crashes, wow. uh, when the euro and the big stock markets crash, if you know what this to do. This guy's telling you the hat trick. Um, if, if you have the right plan to set up, uh, you, can, you can make a lot of money from this. Uh, for example, hedging strategies is one. Now the whole market's uh, rigged for insiders. Then investing in bonds, treasury They bonds, know when there's a new war. They know when they're going to announce a new policy. Jaws have collectively dropped at what you've just said. Hit, hit pause right it, there. This supposed financial news reporter at the BBC, this, this, this dingbat, this, 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 this info tart is, is like people's jaws. Like I shouldn't be mean. She's probably a great person who probably scheduled him to get the truth out. I'm being mean right now. The point is, she's up there acting like, why our collective jaws have just dropped. You just said the sky is blue and water is wet in little birdies tweet. She's saying, why people's collective jaws just dropped. You mean the big brokerage firms don't love us? Let's go back to the rest of it. We, we appreciate your candor. However, it doesn't help the rest of us, does it? All the rest uh, of the euros. Uh, uh, no. Listen, I would say this to everybody who's watching this. This economic crisis is like a cancer. If you just wait and wait oh. thinking this is going to go away, just like a cancer, it's going to grow and it's going to be too late. What I would say to everybody is get prepared. Uh, this is not a time right now to um, wishful thinking the government is going to sort things out. The government uh, that's enough. Rule the oh, I'm sorry. That, that, that was the kicker. Back it up 20 seconds. I, I forgot why we played the clip. He said, this is not a game. It's not a joke. Goldman Sachs rules the world. It's a controlled implosion. Wow, I uh, was about to cut it off right at the money shot. But, but, but what's so shocking about this is that it's so true. And that it's stated on BBC that reaches tens of millions of people worldwide, and it scared a bunch of people. See, the insiders are sitting around in their $100 million houses right now laughing about this, and they don't want you to know they're getting ready to drop the hammer on you. They want you to naively play along with patty cake, uh, with a patty cake with them. Now, see, if I had a teleprompter, I wouldn't have said patty cake. But the, and I could have like the White House just download talking points for me as they do for the major media. But see, occasionally something slips out on these type of programs that isn't scripted, and that's why they've come out and attacked this guy. Uh, let's let's have him continue. Thinking the government is going to sort things out. The governments don't rule the world. Goldman Sachs rules the world. Goldman Sachs does not care about this rescue package, neither does the big funds. So actually, what I would, I, I would actually tell people, I want to help people. Uh, people can make money from this. It isn't just traders. What they need to do is learn about how to, how to make money from a, a downward market. Uh, the first okay. thing people should do is protect. You can watch the rest of the clip up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com and Zero Hedge and everywhere else. You're not supposed to tell people how to, how to actually protect themselves. That's why they're trying to drive down gold and silver is because it is the obvious real money solution to the fiat poison. Okay, I got Rob Dew coming up, and I'm getting way behind here in the InfoWars Nightly News. We've never had the show be 30 minutes like it's supposed to be. It's unscripted. I can't help it. I mean, what are we going to do here? <laughs> Continuing here with the news, uh, it's gallows humor. I've got to laugh some about what we're facing. Uh, let's just briefly get to Fukushima. I'll show you a clip of... Uh, Three days into it, the MOX-3, number three reactor blew up. It's a plutonium uranium-based reactor. And I talked to top scientists at the time that had sources in Japan that studied the isotopes. They knew it was a complete and total meltdown. That one reactor was probably about 50 times. That's a conservative estimate. 
the type of radiation that came out of Chernobyl. Uh, Chernobyl, conservatively, according to the UN, killed about a million people in the next 20 plus years. Uh, but our EPA's answer has been to just raise the level of radioactive isotopes, what they say is safe. And that's like if a kid gets run over by an 18 wheeler, well, you just still send little kids out in front of the 18 wheeler. You just write a policy saying kids can now live when an 18 wheeler going 100 miles an hour runs over them. It doesn't matter if the kid's dead, you have a piece of paper uh, that says they're still alive. So we're, we're, we have radiation raining down on us. I've seen reports of it a couple hundred times, safe levels, but it's okay. Because sure, the Japanese prime minister had to resign and the trade winds and jet stream come right over the U.S. and milks in Vermont's been found to have high levels of radiation. It's okay. Because Bloomberg is reporting Fukushima desolation, worse thing they've seen since Nagasaki, and residents are fleeing. And I've talked to people uh, that have been in Tokyo uh, recently, Wayne Madsen, he said he's been to Tokyo many times. It's basically empty. I mean, used to, you couldn't get on a subway. Now, if you get on a subway, nobody's on it. The Japanese actually ran to the south when radiation went up. Here in America, the government just says, hey, it's good for you. You know, bisphenol A is good for you. I remember when it came out that there was melamine in a bunch of products and food from China, and it was killing a bunch of Chinese, and the Chinese government executed the company head that did it and apologized, and they had all those deaths. Our EPA just responded by saying, melamine's no longer bad for you. By the way, listeners aren't going to believe that. Let's just go ahead and search. EPA says melamine no longer bad for you. You'll get Washington Post. See, maybe the government can say gravity doesn't exist. And if they put a memo out and put it in the news, then suddenly I can just float to work. You know what I mean? That'd be kind of cool. Like, whoa, we ought to do a piece. Uh, Marcos does, does awesome graphics. He did that spontaneous combustion piece yesterday and also the Thundar piece. Maybe we should do a piece where I just, the government writes a memo saying there's no more gravity. And, or, or that I'm not bound to my body. And I'll just astral project like Casper, you know, like my ghost will go out. Because the government uh, wrote a memo. Or maybe they'll write a memo saying Keebler elves are real. So I'll have Keebler elves start dancing around me in here. Because they say radiation's safe. They're still looking for it. Uh, melamine, uh, just say EPA, melamine no longer bad for you. And... Uh, you can uh, learn all about it. But the point is, is that we're not in Kansas anymore, as I said last night. Okay, I'm really out of control now. Uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and get into our top story this evening. We've got a compilation of several newscast clips locally that I want to analyze. But today on the radio, I play one of the clips, and the guy goes to the door and says, Hi, I'm here from the school district. I'm here to give your child the shot. He just says it authoritatively, like, Hi, um, you know, I'm here, hand over your bank account to me. And of course, then they go on to imply, well, we also found a lot of truant kids, as if it's criminal to not vaccinate your children. And they also say it's a new law. Well, we went and checked. There is no law. And since we started reporting on this yesterday, they've already come out this morning on the same news channel and said, you know what? There is a waiver from the policy. Let's see, a policy is not a law. But then they went back in the same newscast to say, but still, you have to do it. And, and where I live in Austin uh, now, uh, every year in August, they say, it's the law, you got to take shots. And I'll call up the local TV station and I'll say, you know there's no law. You know there's a waiver from the policy. And they go, no, no, kids are going to jail. Yeah, they're going to juvenile hall because the schools kick them out because they aren't vaccinated and then charge them with truancy when the school kicked them out and that's illegal. Because it's not truant if the school suspends you over a policy. Got that? It's a parlor trick. It's a fraud. And they run the same gang. The same gang runs the same game all over the country and all over the world. The same scam is run. And I'm here calling it. Let's go ahead and start going to this newscast. And uh, I will stop and comment on it. Measures to make sure every student is vaccinated in Natomas. School officials went door to door with a nurse offering the Tdap vaccine. To meet a new School officials went door to door offering. Funny, I have the, the local newspaper reporting that it was the law. And then later they say it's the law. See, this is all a trick. Oh, we're offering this. But if you notice in these different newscasts, in fact, I haven't even seen the package they put together, uh, but the one I aired on the radio today, the guy comes to the door and he says, again, I'm here to give her the shot, starts trying to go in. And the mother says, 
bleep you and slams the door. Go back to it. School officials went door to door with a nurse offering the Tdap vaccine to meet a new state mandate. Hello, how are you, ma'am? My name's Heyman Matlock with the Thomas Unified School District. It's not easy going door to door making sure students are vaccinated. Your daughter is on independent study. Yes. Uh, Kayla, has she yes. been verified with her Tdap? No. Okay. We were coming today to give her a Tdap if she hasn't had it done yet. Get the off my house. Matlock dealing with a lot of sticky situations despite weeks of free clinics and warnings. Some Natomas kids still have not received a shot for whooping cough. He has a list of more than 40 left to get vaccinated. So, with a traveling nurse on hand, district officials are now left to track down kids who may be falling through the cracks. There are a number of kids that we're finding out in our home visit today that are truant. They aren't in All right, school. That's enough. So and it's coming up later in the piece. Five years ago, I interviewed the state attorney in Maryland. It was a big national story. They had thousands of kids lined up at the courthouse, forcibly inoculating them, saying it's the law. And even the people that were going on Good Morning America and CNN who were against it were saying it's wrong that this is the law to make us take vaccines we think are dangerous. There was no law. And I got the state attorney on it and I said, sir, there's no law. And he goes, you're right. I don't even give my kids shots. Started laughing. And I said, oh, you've heard about how they're bad. And he was laughing. And uh, I said, well, and I'm going to show you the article come up in a minute. It's got his name and all the info in it. And I said, so it was all color of law. It was all a big hoax. And he said, wow, you ought to be a lawyer. Like if I was a lawyer, then I've got a degree in conning people. There is no law to take vaccines. They're trying to pass them. The actual law they've now passed in California is they can convince your kid to take it, and then they don't have to tell you no parental consent is needed, which itself is incredibly unconstitutional. Think of the liability of the school districts. But just like the school districts in 1910, 1920, 1930s, sterilized up until the 80s half a million women, in some cases for just being poor, how did they grab women and sterilize them? They just did it. They had seat, They had social workers. They had cops. They had doctors ready to do it. Just like in Nazi Germany. They just do it. There's no law that they could chop your testicles off. People send me emails going, well, they didn't do that. They did, you know, they just tied their tubes. No, no, they would lop the testicles off. I made films about it. It's called Endgame. Look it up. This is total fraud you're seeing. By the way, let's go to a document cam shot over here of the screen. I said EPA from memory because we're not using teleprompters. We're using my brain here. Okay? This is run by my brain. So it's going to have fits and starts. This is real. This isn't a White House memo you're getting. FDA, of course, it'd be the Food and Drug Administration. Low risk of illness from food containing melamine. Back in 2007, all those Chinese dying and executing the people that did it and all our kids getting sick. What's our government's response? Hey, let your baby die of kidney failure because it was in the formula. Let them die. Radiation's good. Melamine's good. DU's good. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back to the rest of the articles and documents the guys have put together showing this history of hoax and fraud. Again, even if you're for vaccination, you think it's great. You trust Big Pharma. They're lying. Rick Perry lied and said, it's the law. You've got to take this Gardasil shot. And we called him and said, listen, you piece of garbage. We know it's not the law and called his bluff. And now he's backpedaling. There's all of our articles on it. No law says parents have to get their children vaccinated. Article after article after article going back year after year. And here it is. State attorney admits no law makes vaccines mandatory. I had him on the show. Hundreds of parents face jail time after school children kicked out of school, triggering truancy. And I said, you're getting them for truancy when you kicked them out. That's not statutory. And he went, ooh, you ought to be a lawyer. No, ought to, you ought to be an American instead of a dirty, low-down deceiver. And when he giggled on air, it freaked everybody out and said, I don't vaccinate my children. Well, then what in the Hades? I mean, it's evil if you're vaccinating your kids and try to go out through fraud and intimidate others into taking them. But when you make a joke and say, I don't vaccinate my kids, you just reached a whole nother level of wickedness. Look. I've already said it 50 times. I don't know how else I can say it to show you what's happening. Even the people that go on the news and say they don't want their kids forced to take this stuff say this is a wrong law. There is no stinking law. 
It's a fraud. These people are liars. I am sick of it. And thank God people are starting to get this hoax. That's why, as I said earlier, we're going to play the clip. A day after we started talking about this, they got the local news to admit, okay, there is a waiver. But it's a waiver to a law that doesn't exist. It's a waiver to a BS policy. And when you go to the hospital now, pregnant wives are not supposed to take vaccines until now they say it's good for you, even though it admittedly is on the insert and cause spontaneous miscarriage. And the doctor comes and says, fine, sign a waiver, you accept responsibility. No, you son of a bitch. You sign a waiver saying you accept responsibility for trying to cram this stuff down our throat because you are financed and bullied by Big Pharma. Now let's go to the clip of these backtrap, backtrapping, God, backtracking pieces of trash. I'm so angry, I can't even talk. I'm Hi, sick of con artists. You need the whooping cough shot in Vacaville. Students who don't have the shot will no longer be allowed in class unless they opt out of the requirement with a waiver. For more on the story, let's go live to News 10's Karen Massey, who is outside Vacaville High School. Karen? Well, News 10 has been inundated with phone calls and emails every time we do this story. Parents are complaining about having to get their children vaccinated, including the parents here at Vacaville High. Well, the law says parents do have a choice in this matter, as long as they're willing to deal with the consequences. Hit pause, hit pause, back it up 30 seconds. This is the double speak when they get caught in the hoax. They then say, well, parents are complaining about having to get their kids vaccinated. You don't have to. It's like saying parents are complaining they have to buy a used car from this place or they have to eat chicken fried steaks at this certain restaurant. But now parents have been told there's a waiver. And then they go back into saying you still have to do it. It's all a fraud. Your government is a hoax that hires a bunch of yes people that'll sit there and BS you. And if it doesn't make you angry, something is wrong with you. Go back to the clip. Karen? Well, News 10 has been inundated with phone calls and emails every time we do this story. Parents are complaining about having to get their children vaccinated, including the parents here at Vacaville High. Well, the law says parents do have a choice in this matter, as long as they're willing to deal with the consequences. Hit pause. The law says the parents do have a choice. See, they're trying to get you con that you've got to take inoculations from Big Pharma caught adding cancer viruses, you name it as long as you're willing to face the consequences. They're trying to trick you to sign some waiver saying you're a bad parent when you don't have to fill out the waiver. You notice that mother they first went to earlier and said, oh, well, your daughter's now studying at home. In most of those cases, people start homeschooling and pull them out because the school kicks them out. So the mother says, well, I'll just keep them at home. And the school, so they still get federal money, say, don't homeschool, put them in, in at-home school run by the school system. It's kind of a quasi purgatory, but you still get the dirty bureaucrat there going, well, I'm just gonna come in and give him a shot here in the land of the free, home of the brave. Let's go back to the clip. A nurse explains to a mom about getting the whooping cough shot for her three sons. There are among 3,100 Vacaville students who began the school year without the vaccination. We have whittled it down to this morning. It was 154 oh, look students. Look at that zombie. Um, all of them have been receiving wife. phone calls all last week and received Nothing notices more dangerous in the mail those saying that they women. need to get their teeth out. Get your muscle nice and loose. That's a shot that inoculates against the sometimes deadly disease. Uh -huh. Students just offer up their arm in return for an all-important document Ready? saying they have it. Okay, Ruben, this is your pass to get back into class. I wasn't even sure I was going to do it. I wanted to do a little bit of research first. And Count Michelle Takis among parents concerned about the impact of vaccinations. God, a lot of the things with um, immunizations these days talk of them being linked to um, autism and ADHD and that kind of stuff. She had signed a waiver saying no shots for her son based on personal beliefs. Today we just decided I got off work a little bit early. Let's go just get it done. Healthcare professionals are glad for the change of heart. The whole reason for the requirement was in response to the pertussis outbreak that started last year in California. And when many folks okay, signed waivers turn it off. Waters. The, the con keeps going. The requirement, the requirement. There is no law. There were 10 deaths in California out of 30 plus million people they claim last year.
Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot trust this government that's been involved in radiating our troops, nerve gassing them, testing stuff on foster children, killing them. And you got a bunch of well-meaning idiot zombies like the school nurse and the rest of them out there pushing this stuff on kids. And I will not apologize of extremism and defense of liberty. I've had enough of this. I've read too many UN and Rockefeller documents like we showed you last week on air where they said they're adding sterilants and cancer viruses to the vaccines to reduce population. Our life expectancy is dropping, the IQ is dropping, cancer is doubling and tripling depending on the type. These people force medicate us with toxic waste they call sodium fluoride. I'm sick of it. The government wants in our bodies. They want to force this crap on us. And I, for one, have had enough. We're going to go to break and come back with more on InfoWars Nightly News. I'm sorry if I've been ranting, but just watching this giant con game take place makes my blood All right, boil. It's InfoWars Nightly News. I had a few minutes to settle down here. But knowing that so many children are dead and dying and having convulsions and narcolepsy and Guillaume Barre from all these vaccines, and that they've got several hundred about to come online that government's going to mandate. And last week I showed one of the big Merck heads saying a child could be given 10,000 vaccines at one time. They're now giving them 50 something in the first two years, and it is mass death and brain damage. I mean, this is Armageddon, but it's a delayed kill, it's a slow dumbing down, and it rips my guts out to read Rockefeller Foundation documents in the 60s, how they were going to do this to us, and now watch it happen, and see the White House Zion Tsar brag about putting stuff in vaccines and water in the 70s, and now he's the head of all science operations for DARPA. <sighs> You know what, I don't apologize for getting mad earlier. It's just, but I do apologize for getting so angry I can't even speak. Because I've dealt with this for 17 years of being on air and being awake. And I should be more positive because people are awakening. 10 years ago, five years ago, two years ago, they wouldn't have to get on the news and say, okay, there is a waiver. They would just keep lying and saying, it's the law, you'll go to jail. It's the law, you'll go to jail. They take people's children who don't take vaccines when they're ignorant. And they take them into these family courts that aren't real courts and take them. It's a holocaust and I've had enough of it. Okay, I got documents in the late 90s, everybody knows I covered it, I've shown the documents on air, that the OnStar system with the federal government is watching you and listening to you and tracking everything you're doing. And then a year and a half ago it came out that TomTom, Tom, one of the GPS companies that has little devices, was selling the data to the feds and other corporations and selling it to police for speed trackers to mail you tickets in the mail in Canada. That's all come out. Well, they've decided to go ahead and tell the slaves that they're doing this to them because their lawyers have told them to. So buried in there, OnStar and others have said, yeah, we're selling all your data. And since there was such a backlash and people learned you've got to actually remove the OnStar, they still sell it even when you're not paying to have it turned on, uh, they've come out and said, okay, we're going to quit doing it. Well, Tom Tom did that two years ago and was now back in the news this week. And we're going to roll some video of news articles uh, caught doing it. So there's Tom Tom sold driver's GPS details to be used by police for speed traps. Uh, there's a good example of that. Again, this is all illegal. This is a violation of your privacy. Cops do it, they go to jail. OnStar, again, has been caught doing it. Now they've backtracked and said, okay, we're going to stop selling your data to the local threat fusion centers. How about somebody reveal what the government's doing. Well, we know they're shipping in narcotics, ship, shipping guns around the world. They just got caught ATF shipping guns directly to Mexico. I told you they weren't just uh, shipping um, you know, guns to drug gangs in the U.S., and, and now it's all come out. Uh, there it is. Uh, that, that came out years ago that when you order a pizza through the big pizza companies, they run you through a database to actually find out if you have any criminal uh, warrants out, and then instead of a pizza, you get a SWAT team raid. Or if they can't uh, dispatch cops then, you just go in a database. And Google admits that they've got microphones, programs they're using on the computers to watch and listen to you. Uh, and now they're talking about taking over your cell phone with big sys alerts. And big sys alerts are going in Walmart and Targets and other places. I mean, it's just, it's just absolutely beyond 1984. And Xbox face scans you with a Kinect system. I mean, it's just unbelievable. This is, th this is a mad dash towards tyranny. And I'm still trying to convince the average yuppie that we're losing our basic liberties 
uh, and freedoms. Okay, uh, I want to go ahead and go to our next piece of news that hits a little bit closer to home. There was once a time in our republic that it was taken for granted that the press was free and sacrosanct. No one dared lay a hand upon a reporter. Well, not now. I've been arrested covering events. Many of my crew have been arrested. I've had to shell a lot of money out defending uh, my reporters. But in the case of Rob Dew, who actually heads up behind the scenes the InfoWars Nightly News, he got arrested, and the footage is evidence of it, for peacefully covering the police attacking men and women, college students, cracking girls' heads open who were riding on bicycles, uh, police releasing police dogs on old women coming out of grocery stores with bags. They just would randomly say, no one allowed out in the city of Pittsburgh. Well, now Stuart Rhodes, the head of Oath Keepers, uh, has filed suit uh, with Rob Dew against the city of Pittsburgh to defend the First Amendment. And Rob is not litigious, but he does understand that if you don't fight for a right, you lose it. And uh, Rob, it's already been a long show tonight. We've got to get home and at least tuck our kids into bed tonight. Uh, but in the next few minutes, break down uh, exactly why you're doing this. It's got a lot of attention. UPI, yep. uh, dozens of newspapers, Pittsburgh Gazette, journalists who city over arrested G20 Summit, a journalist who covered G20 Summit for the website Infowars.com. The Alex Jones Show has sued the city of Pittsburgh over the treatment he received at the hands of police two years ago. Yeah, and in fact, it was two years on Sunday um, when it happened, and uh, it was the end of, of covering the G20. It was basically over. In fact, the G20 had ended, and uh, we had another night before we left, and we heard of a, there was a police brutality protest going on at the Pitt campus. So, all right, we're going to go up and cover it. We get up there, it was like pandemonium had broken out. There was at least 500 cops by the time we got there. By the time the night was over, there was close to 1,500 uh, fully, you know, fully armed in their battle gear with the LRADs, with the batons, with pepper spray, with, you know, uh, shotgun canisters. I mean, it was incredible. Well, people were anything. daring to go protest the World Bankers meeting. Right. But and you were even more evil. You tried to videotape this in America. Exactly. And I mean, I've got all the footage. There's, I, I'm not protesting. I'm covering the protest. I'm covering people getting hit. And then I go up and interview them. And they're like, I was just trying to walk, ask the cops which way to go. I get busted. And, and so you also have their police scanner recordings right. where they were admitting they were blocking folks from getting away right. and then saying leave and then attacking you. Exactly. They, they did a, a massive kettling procedure in this park um, right next to the Cathedral of Learning in Heinz Chapel, uh, right there on the Pitt campus. Miles away, at least four to five miles away from any type of uh, G20 action that was going on over the over In fact, the it was over. Yeah, it, it was done. So uh, it started off, and we're at the, and you can, you guys can run the footage in there. Um, it starts off, we're at the road. Um, the cops start lining up. They had just gotten rid of the protesters. If you look at it here, they got, they got rid of the protesters in the park. They, they dispersed, and then they decided they were going to start lining up and, and corralling people into the park, and, um, and then they blocked off the park from the top. It's a big hill, and so. I'm covering it from the road. There they just knock some guy in the head. Yeah, and I actually interviewed that guy later. And oh, he, he can was, kill somebody like that. Yeah, and he, they knocked him over a chain, and it, you know, it was pretty dangerous. I saw him uh, going after a girl on a bike. They were hitting people through the hedges. People were just pouring through these hedges, which had a fence in the middle, trying to get away from the cops. Yeah, is that coming up where the girl's on a bike and they just savage her? Yeah, I, actually, I didn't shoot that. This is stuff that I personally shot, so I didn't, I didn't shoot that footage. Burmese had shot that. And then this is stuff, you know, I'm trying to go out on, there's an exit right there I was trying to leave while cops were blocking it You were off. trying to film Darth Vader's in America. Sure, and then they shoot tear You're an extremist. So we walk away from that. I'm, you know, I'm trying to get, get out of there at that point. I was a little afraid for my safety, but I'm also a journalist, so I'm still filming this stuff. And, um, and then at the end, we're all surrounded, and it comes up to a point, and there's, uh, I see a girl in a blue shirt walk up with her press pass. And you guys can go to that, so the last clip in there. And, and she walks up, she shows them her press pass, she goes right through. I said, all right, well, I shouldn't have any problem. And there, and there it is, right there. They let her out. So I'm about to, I go up to do that. Luke grabs me from behind and starts to, you know, tell me in the camera that he got beat up by cops. He's, you know, he's a little bit of profanity, but he's obviously mad because he got hit twice by these cops with batons. 
And uh, and then there's a point. At and again, they're God. Here are peaceful people. They're saying to Spurs, you're trying to leave. Sure. But oh, she's a little lady from the Pittsburgh Gazette or whatever. We're going to let her go. But dude, you got long hair. You don't look right. So you're going to go sit out in the sleet all night with people with bags over their heads and yeah. get beat up. No, it was horrible. I'm going to show that. you. This yeah. ain't America, boy. After I got arrested, our veterans exist, fought so you wouldn't have rights. Yeah, well, apparently. And, uh, and you know, this is a place I'm from. I lived in Pittsburgh from 1990 to 98, so it's a place I kind of call my second home. I have a lot of friends. Part there. of here, Al-Qaeda. Yeah. And, um, and, and so, you know, I'm there all night in this room. Uh, they got steel handcuffs on me. Every time I try to, like, push up my glasses or move my hair, it's like this the whole time because you can't, you can't move. They're feeding you horrible food. Then they took us out in this courtyard, and it's raining. It's freezing cold. It, the temperature dropped to, like, the low 60s that night, which... You know, isn't that bad here, but when, you know, it's cold and windy and it's rainy and you're sitting out with a t-shirt and shorts on, you know, it, it was, it was ridiculous. Well, I heard a lot of other stuff I won't mention on air went on with some of the other guys that got arrested, but they said it was pretty yeah. amazing. And these people were just inhuman. They looked at us like we were trash. We were scum. I would try to talk to them like, well, there's hey, nothing worse than a reason. demonstrator who doesn't like foreign banks raping their country. I mean, you're the enemy. Well, and I wasn't even demonstrating. I was there covering it. You know, we called in. We tried to go talk to the Army, ask them about the National Guard. We got press. footage of that. We call. They say, go talk to the public information person. You show up, and they call the cops and say you're terrorists yeah. trying to blow up the base. They, they, said, they said, get out of here. We don't want to talk to you. Come back tomorrow. And so we leave, and then they, they told the uh, Sheriff's Department that we ran, that we uh, were asking a bunch of questions and poking around. And we got video of it. We go up to the front. No, gate, I know because I called the cop him. who called you and threatened you at the hotel, and yeah. he was like, "Well, they thought they might want to blow up the base." I mean, so sure. in America, like the guy know, with the camera is now a terrorist, and that's well. Apparently I mean, that's the that's idea of this. I saw documents you showed me today where they raided all these IOPS, yeah. and they were saying the people that worked there were that, that it was terrorism that somebody might have not paid taxes, right? And, and then they got all these man, man, manuals where Tea Partiers. They're saying protesting is terrorism now, and the Fed is spying on people. That's now admitted. It's all part of the Patriot Act. They're branding any crime that could do bodily harm as terrorism. Whereas, you know, if you hit somebody, it's assault. It's not terrorism. Well, dude, here, here's the good news. We're not laying down to this. No, not at all. And we've seen similar things happening the last week and a half in, in New York. Yeah. Where they're arresting peaceful people and pepper spraying women. For no reason. Yeah, after they corral them with nets. They got these weird nets now. Yeah, women are in saying. nets, reporters. They walk yeah. over and go, eh. Spray them in the but, face. By the way, you oh. saw that, you said. Oh, yeah. After after I was hogtied, I was zip-tied behind my back. And I, I was on the knees. They said, get on your knees for your own safety. And I, so I'm sitting there, and I'm hoping I'm not going to get hit. The camera's in my bag, and it's still rolling. And I look over, and these students, these are kids. They're laying on their on their fronts. They got their hands behind their back, and these guys are going around spraying them in the face. <laughs> spraying them in the well, face. Well, that's, uh, that's freedom. George Washington fought so foreign bankers could rob you, and so people that dared to be out in public in America could be pepper sprayed while in handcuffs. Yeah, this is not the freedom I want. Do you want to apologize? No, I want them to apologize to me, and that's why we're, you know that's why we're going after them. We decided. Well, to I hope you uh, win the suit so that they understand that it's not their right to do this. But they'll just use taxpayer money to pay it. Instead, they should fire these cops who are out of control. Rob Dew, I'm glad you made it back. Thanks. You bet. And, of course, my instructions to the crew were do not get arrested and uh, do not be part of the protest. And that's clear in your footage, and you should win the lawsuit uh, if there is any basic justice left in our society. Okay, folks, that's it for InfoWars. Nightly news, God willing, and we'll see you back here tomorrow night, 7 o'clock central.